Hi, it's Brendan Chaplin here, and this is Strength and Conditioning TV. And we're going to be bringing you interviews, exercises, challenges, insights into athlete training and really good quality training so that it'll help you as a coach or as an athlete or as somebody who's just interested in training. And we're going to be bringing you really high quality stuff, hot off the press of the best athletes in the business. Now, I want to introduce somebody to you who is uh, an ex-athlete of that I coach personally and still an athlete and an aspiring strength and conditioning coach, and that's Sophie Wood. So, how are you doing today, Sophie? Yeah, good, thank you. Good. And it's good to have you essentially as a bit of a co-presenter on Strength and Conditioning TV. It's going to be cool. Yeah, hopefully. See how it goes. <laughs> You're not nervous at all, are you? No. Oh, not so bad. First time I've done anything like this, so... Yeah. Yeah. It'll be an experience. That's cool. It's all good. And you're coming back off a little bit of a layoff from your own training, but you just was telling me then you started your winter athletics training blocks. Tell us a little bit more about that. You're, first things first, you're, what's the event you're training for at the moment? So, 400 hurdles. Um, although I haven't, hurdle, I haven't raced uh, four hurdles race since 2012 due to various reasons. Um, so, yeah, the season's just finished. Uh, just this month, I haven't competed this season, so I thought I'd get a head start on everyone else, start, start winter weight, so a lot more volume, yeah. uh, so a lot more reps, mm. lower weight, just try and cram in the muscular endurance yeah. for a few weeks before I move on to the strength, strength side of things and then power yeah. later on. So what are you doing in that muscular endurance block at the moment then? What exercise are you doing, what sets and reps? Yeah, so last week, I think it's my first week, Did started with some deadlifts, did four sets of 12, and then moved on to some squats. Again, four sets of 12, superset with bench press. Uh, yeah. Four sets of 12, pretty much, is my that set level of reps. Intro. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, then I finished off with some uh, lat pull down, a bit of core exercises, and some technique, yeah. running technique with a band. Just to try and get my body back into back into some of the things. And then my second session will be more of like power and power and endurance together. So it'll be yeah. cleans with box jumps. Yeah. Um, so some supersets some, there. Yeah, yeah, supersets. Try and get keep that power going, but make it more not full on power. Keep yeah. the reps quite high, yeah. which I haven't really done for a long time. So it should be quite That's interesting. Cool. And four sets of twelve. See, I hate doing four sets of twelve because it's it's like it's actually quite metabolic when yeah. you do, it, especially with a big exercise like a deadlift. So, like, how did you feel at the end of that session? What was your recovery like? I was actually quite surprised at how it got me um, aerobically. Yeah. Very much so. I yeah. didn't expect it to. Uh, deadlifts were quite hard, so I might have done. I think I did about eight to nine off the bang. Mm. Had like a couple of second rests and then finished it off. Yeah. Uh, towards the end, I was struggling to walk. Yeah. You know, stand there and your legs are shaking inside, yeah. but it's a good feeling. Mm. Uh, certainly hurt for a few days after, but yeah. I enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, I, must, I would imagine the the doms, the delayed onset soreness would have been. You'd have had some of that for sure. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, Monday I did quite a lot of cleans, mm. uh, just to get in a bit of technique stuff, and I'm still hurting today. You're still so still, today. So and it's, Thursday today. Yeah, so, that's it. so it's been Three a few days, days now. Um, but I think it was just the volume that got me. Because yeah. I'm so used to doing strength and power. Yes. Yeah. Obviously not as much volume. Mm. It's just definitely, it was a good workout though. I enjoyed yeah. it. And how far off, I mean, I remember when we were training and, and I was writing your program and we were getting up to some pretty good numbers on your, well, everything really, weren't we? Squats and deadlifts. How far? How far off are you? Do you feel from that strength level that you have in there of kind of smashing them out for sets of threes and some serious power? Deadlifts, I'm not so bad with. Yeah. Uh, squats. I struggle with squats. I don't know if that's because the weight's behind me mm -hmm. and do like cleans and deadlifts with the weight in front. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been trying to work on my squats quite a lot. Yeah. Um, deadlifts on there, cleans. Almost there, just got a few bits to work on. Uh, because I've just done them a bit sporadically, mm -hmm. I've kept like a constant weight, but not increased the weight. 
which I hopefully will manage to do further down the line this season. Well, you find that as, 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 as the years go by, not that certainly you're not that old and I'm not that old, but um, as the years go by, you don't have to do quite as much of a catch-up process when you, when you get into your pre-season because you've sort of built that in previous yeah. years. So you should be, able to, should be able to get back somewhere to your, your best a little bit quicker. Yeah, I've definitely found that, like I say, with dead, deadlifts and even, even cleans, I can start off with a fairly decent weight, which used to be, wow, that's, that's a good okay. weight. Yeah. yeah, so I can start off at that. It's just mm. pushing, breaking that barrier mm. to get back to where I was. But yeah, I can definitely, definitely start nice at a decent weight now rather than yeah. dropping it really low to start with. And have you tweaked or changed your nutrition to allow for you to do this extra volume? Has there been any modifications there? Um, I try and eat quite, quite a lot of carbohydrates. Yeah. Whereas I know quite a few people will be like, oh, try and cut down on that. Um, but with athletics, it's because it is quite high intensity, you need your carbohydrates for recovery. Mm, so in my post, like pre workout shake, I'll have to try to have two to one carbs to protein rather yeah. than the other way around, which yeah. quite a lot of people do to build yeah. muscle. Yeah. I obviously want to stay quite lean but also get a good recovery because I know I've got a track session the next day or sometimes I have a track session on the same day as my uh, weight session. So try to do that. Winter, diet isn't too much of an issue because you, obviously, you still want a bit, of, a bit of fat for warmth yeah. Um, in, yeah. in winter. I'm glad you said that. That's exactly why I keep a little bit of fat <laughs> for warmth. Yeah, yeah in winter, it's <laughs> like cold. Like a winter coat, isn't yeah. It? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you shred it off for the yeah, season. Exactly. Uh, yeah, exactly. But no, I've just still got to shred it off, but yeah, it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I try to keep a bit, a bit on, especially with all the uh, aerobic training that we do. It's very uh, endurance type based. So obviously I know that I can eat a lot more and it's going to burn a lot more. And then as we go into pre-season and season, that's when I start making sure my diet at some point. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> getting down to that ideal weight, but winter... I try not to worry too much. Um, keep it healthy, but if I want to treat, I'll have you a treat. That. Yeah. Cool. So, Good. yeah. We were just discussing before off camera about your plans this weekend. So you're, you're heading down to London to do your Pilates course. That's right, isn't it? Yeah, Pilates course this weekend will be my first Pilates training weekend. <clears throat> so I've done a lot of online uh, study. Yeah. Uh, more theory based so Friday I've got an exam and then it rest is just learning different yeah. types of moves and I've got another one in a couple of weeks which is the advanced mm. and I think I've got another one in November and then my final assessment in January and then should be qualified in, in that area so just trying to build a portfolio mm. yeah different and, things. and what, what was it that attracted you to, to learn in Pilates and becoming a I suppose a Pilates coach Pilates instructor and that side of things um, well, Pilates in the last few years has really grown mm. and it's still quite new to a lot of people and I personally believe Pilates is a good prehab mm -hmm. for sport, yeah. uh, working on your inner core, your stabilizers, glute activation, mm. things like that. I think it's very good to prevent injuries. So I went to Leeds Metropolitan University. Yeah, now called um, Leeds Beckett. Now, yeah. now Leeds Beckett. Yeah. Um, prior to going there, I used to get quite a lot of uh, injuries, muscle injuries. Yeah. Going to Leeds, met Leeds Beckett. I started doing Pilates work, mm. various different things like that, and I luckily never got injured. And mm. I do put it down to mm. the Pilates, the inner core, mm. stabilising. Yeah. and glute activation and I think I can apply it to lots of different things like even s becoming a strength and conditioning yeah. coach start them off with things like that yeah. and make sure <clears throat> they're working the flex muscles in their lifts and all different things like that there's, there's definitely some good, good stuff there and 
and it, it, like no one system is has got all the answers. Yeah. So strength strength training has not got all the answers, yeah. even though I, it's got a lot, but it's not got them all. And Pilates hasn't got them all, and yoga hasn't got them all. They've all got benefits that we can yeah. uh, take from them. And the way I sort of think about that is they they just it's like having a bigger toolbox. Yeah. So you can dip into that. You can grab some stuff out of the Pilates toolbox and get people doing some of that work on the synergists and the smaller muscles and the yeah. inner core. You put that back in, you can go back into the strength training toolbox and bring that out, put that back in. You might go into your body weight training or your martial arts stuff and do some of that stuff and athletics and sprint sort of drills as well. So it's, it's increasing your repertoire as a coach, isn't it? Yeah, that's what I aim to do over the next yeah. year or so. I'm just trying to <clears throat> build up my portfolio mm. of what I can offer as a coach. Um, even not just for professional athletes, for the general public as well. I think it's important for them to start to realise the benefits of it from a general health point of view. Um, yeah. Try and incorporate into them, change their, their way of thinking, hopefully get them on board just for general well-being, general fitness. If they want a weight loss, I think doing things like strength training is a very good way for weight loss rather than just your cardio, yeah. which some people get a bit caught up in. Um, yeah. So I think it's take it into the general public as well as just mm. performance athletes. Yeah, yeah. And then long-term goal or longer-term goal, it's probably not even that long-term, medium-term, is, is to, to move into S&C, strength and conditioning, that's right, isn't it? Yeah, that's what I'd ideally like to do. Um, hoping to start a masters at Leeds Beckett yeah. in September sports therapy. Yeah. So that's just another thing I can add to my portfolio yeah. my toolbox. Um, so if I can offer the therapy side of it with strength and conditioning, um, you not know, various different other courses which I plan on doing in the next 12 months, I think it'll make me a better all rounder, um, more to offer. Mm. So I think things like therapy, sports therapy and strength and conditioning go together. Um, so your strength and conditioning can help with your prehab and um, rehab, yeah. as well as your therapy, which is obviously the main aim for your therapy. Yeah, 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 <coughs> absolutely. And one of the things that I think in a competitive industry, and not just competing with other professionals, but being able to offer to your athletes or your clients, one of the biggest things you need now as a coach is, is what I'd call a, a point of difference. Being able to offer something that other people don't. Yeah. So having your S&C credentials and experience and qualifications, if you like, is really important. But also being able to say, well, actually, I can, put, I can take you on the stretching table and I can get into detail on that side of things. Yeah. I can do some manual therapy. I can do some soft tissue release work, I can do some Pilates and take you through that as well. It, it's, it's giving you that point of difference. Yeah. It's making it easy to appoint you in an environment where you might have, if you put a, a strength and conditioning job out, you probably have, I don't know, 50 people straight away will apply for that. But if you can go in and say, yeah, but also I can do this and this and this, but also I can help the physios out with the therapy, I can run a Pilates session, I can do some of the classes that you've done in the past, that it is a point of difference. Yeah, I think you've just got to do things that make you stand out, make you different from everyone else. Obviously, there'll be a few people who go down the same road that I will. Um, but I think, it, yeah, definitely just all about trying to build, build you as an individual, mm. yeah. make yourself stand out, something different, you never know, someone might offer, have a strength and condition or a sports therapy role um, and they've got a low budget, but they'd also like mm. various other aspects filling. Yeah. If you've got an all round, then yeah. you obviously, you can help them out yeah. Yeah. in their, their yeah, specific I was role. Having another, I was having a chat with somebody not long ago about exactly this, but they were coming from a nutrition standpoint. Yeah. And they were sort of talking about specialising in nutrition and forgetting the S&C. And it, my advice was actually, 
you know, keep the S&C, keep, yeah. keep yourself sharp with that, keep coaching, go and get the nutrition as well, because I, I get for exactly that reason, if you go into a rugby club and mo mo most rugby clubs, maybe just under that yeah. top elite pr premiership rugby or Super League, they don't have the budget for a nutritionist, yeah. but if you can do S&C and nutrition, then it's a big thumbs up, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. The same for you definitely. With therapy. You've got a lot more job opportunities that way as well, um, which is... You know, jobs aren't easy to come by, especially in strength and conditioning. It seems to be a booming industry yeah. at the minute. A lot of people are interested in it. It's becoming big. I work in just a local, a local gym, and there's a lot more people in there doing lifts. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so it is starting to become more mm. widely, yeah. widely known. Absolutely, absolutely. Cool. Well, watch this space. We'll follow your journey very, very closely, and. Um, You'll be getting to do some lifting with us on the videos as well, so it's all good. Um, right, we're going to call it there. We're going to be back very soon with some more videos, and I hope you've enjoyed this interview with myself and Sophie, and we'll be back again very soon. Thanks for watching.